Hey, welcome to the second part of the kill mechanic for our Among Us series. In this lesson, we're going to make a few changes to what we did in the previous video, and we'll be creating the body prefab that will get left behind when a player is killed. Now before we begin, please take some time after this video to check out the latest game that I've developed, which is Presidential Slap. Just in time for the 2020 elections, it doesn't matter whether you're Republican, Democrat, or not even a US citizen, this game allows you to pick and slap around cartoon versions of the two candidates, and there's even a running total of how many times each candidate has been slapped. It's a fun and funny game, and some people have even said that it's quite therapeutic. You can download Presidential Slap for free on both Android and iOS, and I've left links in the description below. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do to create the second part of our kill mechanic is create the body prefab. To create this object, we'll want to start with an empty game object. I've then renamed this object to AU underscore body, and the first component that I've added to this object is a 3D rigid body, after which we'll want to go down to the constraints and freeze the X, Y, and Z positions and rotations. We'll then add a sphere collider, and you'll want to enable is triggered. Now we'll come back to this component to resize the collider once we've added the sprites to our prefab, which we'll do next. To add the sprites, we can right click on our empty game object, go down to 2D object, and select sprite. I've then renamed this object to body sprite, and all we have to do is select the body sprite from our sprite sheet and drag it into the sprite field. We'll then add another sprite object as child to our first sprite, which will be for the part of the body that doesn't change color. So you can right click on your first sprite object and go down to 2D object and then select sprite. I've then renamed this object to part sprite and all we have to do is select the corresponding sprite from the other sprite sheet and drag it into this sprite field. We can then go back to our parent object and select the edit collider button so that we can resize the collider in our scene view to be no bigger than the sprite itself. At this point we can now go ahead and create the script that's attached to our body prefab. Now, I've called the script au underscore body and we'll go ahead and open it up in our coding environment. Now this script is pretty simple. All we need is one variable, which is a serialized field of type sprite render, which I've called body sprite. And then we need one public function with a return type void called set color. This function has a parameter of type color called new color. And all we have to do inside this function is take our body sprite variable dot color and set it equal to new color. This will be so that when a player dies, we can set their body object to be the same color as their player object. So once you have the script, we can go ahead and save it, and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, all we have to do is select our body prefab and drag this new script onto it in the inspector. We then need to take our first child object, which is our body sprite object, and drag it into the body sprite variable. And the last thing that we need to do for this object is turn it into a prefab. So I'll select our prefabs folder and just drag it from our hierarchy into our project window, after which we can delete it from our scene. The next thing that we need to do for this video is make some changes and additions to our player controller script. And so I'll open that script up in our coding environment. All right, so here's all the code that we covered in our previous videos. And the first change that we're going to make to this script is with our target variable. I've changed this variable so that rather than just one single player controller, it's a list of player controllers. And I've renamed the variable to be targets, plural. There's then one variable that we need to add to this script, which is a serialized field of type game object, which I've called body prefab. Now previously in the script, when the imposter becomes within range of another player, we were taking that player and saving them in our target variable. But that only works for if there's one player in our range. We want to change this script so that it can handle multiple people within range. And so the first thing that we need to do is initialize our new targets variable. And we'll do this within the start function. All we have to do is make sure that our list is empty but not null. So I have targets equals new list and the list is of type au player controller and then we have parentheses. This will create a new instance of our list and save it in our targets variable. We then want to scroll down to the on trigger enter function and most of this function is exactly the same only I've changed it from target equals temp target 
to targets.add and we're passing in temp target, which will add the current other player to the end of our list. Now there's another thing that we didn't cover in our previous video that we need to make sure that we're handling, and that is when a player leaves our range. For this we'll need the special onTrigger exit function, which is similar to the onTrigger enter function, only this is executed when an object leaves our trigger zone. Inside this function we want to check to see if other.tag is equal to the player tag. If it is, we then want to get the player controller script from that object. So I have a local variable of type AU player controller called temp target, and we're setting it equal to other dot get component we're looking for AU player controller. We then want to make sure that our list contains this object. So I have if targets dot contains and we're passing in our temp target variable. If this is true, we then want to remove it. So I have targets dot remove and I'm passing in temp target. And so when a player enters our trigger zone, we're adding them to our list. And when a player leaves our trigger zone, we're removing them. Now there's one more change that we need to make to this code from our previous video, and that is our kill target function. Inside this function, the first if statement is the same, but the rest of it is slightly different. Rather than checking to see if target is null, we want to check to see if targets.count is equal to zero. If it is, then our list is empty and we can return. Else, if it's not empty, we want to check the last player in our list. And so I have if targets, square brackets, targets.count minus one, because the count is always one more than the last index. We then close our square brackets and we're checking for the dot is dead variable. If this variable is true, then we want to return. If the player is not dead, then we want to do the same three things that we're already doing, but do them for the last player in our list. So we want to snap our position to the other player's position. So I have transform.position equals targets, and then the same targets.count minus one dot transform dot position. We then want to call the die function on that last player. So I have targets, targets.count minus one, dot die and finally we want to remove the last player from our list and so I have targets dot remove at and we want to pass in the same index which is targets dot count minus one. Now that takes care of all the changes that we needed to make to our previous code. Now all we have to do is add some new code which will be contained within our die function. Inside our die function, all we have to do is instantiate our body prefab and change its color. And so I'm creating a local variable of type AU body called temp body, and we're setting it equal to the return value of the instantiate function. The first parameter for this function is our body prefab variable. The second parameter is our current position, so transform.position, and the third is our current rotation, so I have transform.rotation. Now the instantiate function will instantiate our body prefab, but it'll only return a game object. And so we still need to get the body script off of that object. And so I have dot get component, and we're looking for au underscore body. From here, we can then set the color of our body prefab by taking our temp body variable and calling the set color function. We then want to pass in the current color of our player object. And so I have my avatar sprite dot color. Once you have this, we can save our script and we'll go back to Unity. The only thing that we need to do inside Unity before we test our project is set the body prefab variable. And so I'll open up our player prefab. I'll then select the body prefab and drag it into the body prefab variable. We can then go ahead and test our project. All right, so here I have my astronaut. I can walk around and I've added a couple more astronauts to my scene and changed their colors. If I walk over to one of them and press the space bar, you can see that we snapped the player, the player turns into a ghost, and their body is left behind. Right here you can see that while I walked over to the green player, my player killed the red player because the red player entered my target zone after my green player, making the red player the last player of my list. If I press the spacebar again, I'll probably end up killing the blue player. And now I'm actually out of range of my green player and can't kill them. Alright, so that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create the game Among Us in Unity. For our next lesson, we'll be going over how to report a dead body. And so make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we publish that video.